Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, and this is Bernadette with Dr. Jeremy Webster and Ike Solis because Danny Miles is in New York preparing for the Cowboy game tomorrow. So Ike has big shoes to fill. He does. But Ike, uh, uh, thank you for stepping in for Danny and... You know, I'm going to pull you in like the mob. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to bring you into this conversation for okay. sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, Danny's, no Danny's a big hit. He's a big fan favorite. So we've got to have, we got to have a third. Yeah, Just yeah. The fans love third him. To bounce off of. You know, you got You got some big shoes to fill there. And I'm going <laughs> to ask you because my theme today is: Are you alive in the world? Have you asked yourself that lately? Truly alive in the world. How about you, Jeremy? I, I would say I am. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I, I, I love. There's a lot of things that I love. Those yeah. Find things that you love. How can you not be alive? Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think uh, it, it's an important question to ask yourself, though. And what kind of legacy you're leaving behind? Right. You right. know, when I was about 25, um, I went through a lot of changes in my life, and I, at that point, I just sit down and said, "Okay, what am I going to be like?" And I decided I'm going to live life to the fullest. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to look at things from more of a positive viewpoint. And from that point forward, my life has been a lot better. Yeah, it, well, what's that old expression? Uh, um, oh, goodness. Um, uh, altitude. I was thinking about it as I was walking <laughs> through the doors. Aptitude. Attitude is... Oh, wait, is it? Okay, hold on. Attitude. This. Hold on. That's okay. I can botch it. You know what? Because it's real. That's okay. At least I was thinking it. I used to literally wear rose-colored glasses. Really? Yeah. All right. Just because I wanted to be more positive. <laughs> well... <laughs> You know what? Your attitude, that's, it's got to do with attitude and aptitude determines your altitude. There you go. Or something like that. Something but, like that. But it is true. And I think, I think the attitude is more important than the, than the aptitude. You can, be, you can be smart as heck and not have a good attitude. And you're going nowhere because nobody wants to be around you. Very true. Right? How many people with moderate ability became very successful, have become very successful? Absolutely. Tons of them. It's because of determination. Yeah. Because determination, of- attitude, all the things you're talking about. Well, I've been high on life for a long time, but especially high on life in the, in the, last, the last couple of weeks. And it's because, you know, all my perseverance, all my hard work is finally paying off again. You know, keeping my eye on that vision and not giving up no matter what happens, no matter what is thrown at me. And then, you know, along with the cleanse and just some really amazing, powerful people in my life, I, uh, I truly was absolutely high, euphoric on life uh, all weekend almost. Have you, know? have you ever read the book? Uh, and it's the the title can be misleading. It's it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh yeah, uh huh. It's it's the book that basically the the whole theme of it is no matter what you want to do, and it's not just about necessarily about achieving money or finance financial success. It's any kind of success you want to achieve. The underlying theme of what, how everyone achieves success is by deciding what you want and being determined that you're never going to give up until you achieve that goal. Which is another favorite book of mine, In Search of Excellence. You know, I'm not familiar with that one. It, that's a great book. It's an oldie but goodie. Um, it is uh, Lessons from America's Best Run Companies, but you can apply it to your personal life and well as well. And you, know? and you, you are obviously one of those people who once you f- fixate on something, you're going to get it, right? Um, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Pretty much. From what I've seen from you. <laughs> well, and if I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to lose my mind if I don't. Because I have a good attitude that if I don't achieve it, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. Or uh, maybe my life is going in a different direction. It's all about being on the journey and, and embracing things that happen to you, good and bad. Right. But success is not optional. Yeah. And finding the humor and stuff. You know, um, th- I had like a classic movie weekend because I got my new big screen. Because uh, even though uh, I was disappointed the fight wasn't, it was, was going to have a party for the fight Saturday night that got canceled. And uh but uh, I had like a classic movie weekend. Boxing or? Yeah, bo- uh, MMA. Was it, was, MMA. Okay, it was okay. uh, John Jones. So he was supposed to fight and he um, was he out. And so he's oh. not. <laughs> okay. the, the fight got canceled for <laughs> a couple of different reasons. And uh, that's a whole other different um, topic. But, but I watched the movie Pulp Fiction this weekend. Right. And then on, which is a great classic, you know, it's a, even the violence, even seeing it again was kind of surprising, but what a, what a great film. It really was in a lot of ways. It makes you, I don't know, makes you feel just really bad. You know what afterwards, like you're, <laughs> I'm bad. A, you know, it's just, it was just a, fu- it, it, but there's humor in that. Like, you know, when they're driving and by accident, he hits a bump and the gun goes off and blows the guy's head off in the back. In the back seat, right? Tarantino has a way of making violence funny. It, is, it was funny. <laughs> Where nobody and else really can. Nobody else. No, normally, I would never laugh. I'd start. I'd be the one crying in the audience, you know. Um, 
which comes to the next movie we watched. This is funny. Um, my I watched E.T. with my 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 baby, um, my eight year old baby. Have they the never couch. seen it before? Um, my little one had never seen it, and so at the end, my teenager comes walking down the hall, and she looks at me and she goes, "Oh my God, are you crying, Mom?" And I go, "Yeah, because I have a heart. <laughs> because I have a heart. That's why I'm crying." Yeah, I, I was between six. I, I think I was around six when that movie came out, and it just it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. It's a I great was, film. I was walking around Spielberg? imitating E.T. I was drawing E.T. That's I was just so fixated on E.T. for two years. <laughs> well, and the movie's about love and about loss, and, and it, it's just, who wouldn't cry at that? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I don't care if you're a grown man. Ike, have you seen the movie? Yes, I have. Great and movie. Did you cry? Uh, I didn't cry. I, I don't know. I was young when I saw it, so I enjoyed it a lot. You felt it deeply? Yeah, I felt it deeply. <laughs> but, you know, you were, I was with my older brother, and when you're with your older brother, you're not allowed to cry. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you're like, uh-oh, he's going to punch me. I know he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, Ike, Ike's last name is Solis. I want to uh, almost pay tribute to a man that was very instrumental in the success of Pizza Patron. His name uh, is Juan Solis. He no longer lives here. But, man, you talk about a hardworking man in search of excellence, what we're talking about. The man worked hard, so hard for so many years. Um, he uh, ran our store, number three. That store did incredible sales, absolutely incredible sales. So hats off to you, Juan Solis. I know you're probably not listening, but what a great guy you are. So. And are you? I wonder if you're related. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not. How do you know? <laughs> well, he's S O L I S. I'm S O L I Z. Different family. Ah, okay. See? I got you. Well, I didn't know. <laughs> so, but you pronounce it the same. Yeah, we pronounce it the same. It just. Uh, just because of the last letter, it's a different family. It's yeah. kind of a weird history. Well, I didn't ask you how you spelled your name. See, I just assumed, and you're not supposed to do that either. Right. Oh, that's fine. It's, it's a misconception <laughs> that happens. All right. So, All right, so, so you, sometimes watching a great movie can kind of lead you, can inspire you. To I just be, was, uh, oh, and, it, it can give you a more positive outlook. Can't absolutely. It? Well, and I go back to Pulp Fiction. One of my favorite scenes, of course, because I'm a chick in the movie, is when um, when Uma dances with John Travolta. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the sexiest scenes? There's no sex. There's no touching. There's no kissing. There's nothing. But that is a sexy, that's a sexy scene, right? I suppose or is so. it just me? I, th I think it's mostly you. You think so? Yeah. All right. Ike, back <laughs> me up, man. You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, they, they, I, I, I'm going to admit, they did do a great job. They, they kind of put that chemistry there when they were both dancing. Exactly. The yeah. chemistry. Yeah, because did. you know what? They were relaxed and having fun together and just being themselves. Of course, the heroin probably helped relax and, them. And not you know, worrying but... about Ving Rhames. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not concerned with Ving Rhames at all at that point. <laughs> Until later on that night, they said, okay, this never happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. And the scene with the with the shot through her oh, chest, yeah. that's still brutal. Brutal. Awesome. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, man, I encourage you guys, whoever's out there listening, to watch a great movie tonight. Don't wait till the weekend. Watch a great movie tonight. Yeah. And Tarantino has a new movie coming out. Oh, does he? He does. Really? What is it? Django Unchained. Wow. Yeah, so it's his first movie since uh, his last <laughs> Whatever that was. You are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190. Our topic today is the importance of protein, and we are going to be all over it. I encourage you to listen. We will be back right after the break. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip, 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 dip. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. Boom, boom, pow, pow. Welcome back to One Life Radio. You are listening on to 1190. I'm Bernadette, and I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Webster. Our subject, our subject today is the importance our. of. Our, our, our subject. And uh, Inglorious B A S T A R D S is, was the last movie that Tarantino. It was. Yeah, but he, you didn't want to swear on the air. You're so nice. Lots of dialogue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great dialogue. Yeah, great dialogue <laughs> in Pulp Fiction, too. Yeah. That's one of the greatest parts That's of the his movie. Trademark. Yeah, trademark for sure. <laughs> yep, yeah. Which tells you how brilliant he is. Yeah, some of those movies have almost no, well, no special effects, no, no elaborate scenes, just dialogue. Yeah, just dialogue. Uh, that's all it is. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Pretty much just shot in a warehouse. Uh -huh. Almost nothing happens other great than just dialogue. Too. Yeah, another great one. So there you go. I'm sure, this next one will be just as great. I can't wait for it to come out. I wonder when it comes out. Um, soon. I'm not sure exactly, but this year. Hmm. All right. I haven't paid too close of attention yet. I'll get excited once it comes out on Blu-ray, where I can watch it in my own little home theater. 
Oh, yeah. that's Well, that's what I did. I got a home theater, a, a real one, a really, really cool one in my home with the Sonos system. And so you can, uh, the Sonos system, for those of you that don't know what it is, is incredibly cool because you can uh, select any music ever produced in the free world or any radio station in the in the world and uh, and streamline it right through your home. Wow. And there's different uh, areas, so you can have all your different areas and just pinpoint them if you want, you know, music in just your bathroom and just that type of music. And it's just so cool, the flick of a switch. Nice. Really cool. They nice. make their own subwoofers that go with their systems and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really fun. But I found that I enjoy just watching it in my home more than going to a theater. Oh, um, of course. Yeah. It's, That's why home nice. theaters are so awesome, for sure. You can kick back. It's, and it's a nice goal to have. I mean, it is. It's a nice goal, something to save for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If you have to go to the bathroom, you can hit pause rather than miss one of the best scenes. One in of the, the best scenes in the know. movie. That's right. Or get, grab some good food out of the kitchen mm-hmm. that's nearby, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Or ice cold beer. You don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't, don't have, have, have to go to the Angelica. You don't have to settle for the jujubes <laughs> and the, the uh, Red Hots. Exactly. <laughs> And but okay, speaking now, you know you're not getting any good protein at a movie theater. Okay, <laughs> the only thing not. you're getting is a hot dog, and that's full of fat, right? Well, and worse. And worse. And worse than fat. I yeah. don't even want to see that little uh, documentary about because someone told me that it's absolutely horrid. If you ever watch it, you'd never eat a hot dog again. I don't eat many hot dogs, but I'm still not going to watch the movie. You're still not going to watch <laughs> no. it. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want any part of that for sure. No. Well. Obviously, protein is one of the most uh, important things that we put in our body. So let's talk about that. What, um, what is protein and why is it so important for everyone? Well, first of all, it's one of the key, um, it's, it's one of the main essential nutrients that our body has to have. There's, there's really four big blocks of essential nutrients that we have to have. We have to have protein or, or at least the amino acids from protein. They're, they're 100% essential. If you don't, if you if you miss one of those completely, eventually you die of deficiency in one of those things. And the other really? things are essential fats, How long can vitamins, you go? and minerals. It depends. I, I don't know exactly. It's it's real hard. The thing is, it's real hard to create a diet where you would be a hundred percent deficient in something because you're going to get a little bit of it here and there with whatever you eat. So it's hard to say when you would actually die. But you're going to become very ill if you don't eat one of the essential <laughs> nutrients and and protein, essential fats. Vitamins and minerals are your four basic essential blocks of nutrients that your body, you have to consume otherwise because your body can't make those things. We have to have them. Our body runs on those things. So it's just one of the, the basic things. As far as protein, what it is, it's, it's a, basically a glob of about 21 different amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. Yeah, and, and your, your complete whey protein has every one of them. Oh, yeah, of course. It's wonderful. And I'm not just saying that because I could endorse any product, obviously. Right. But your product, I love the flavor of it. It really is. It's called delicious chocolate. It really is delicious chocolate. And I'm very, very picky about my chocolate. You sure. know, I am. Mm-hmm. I definitely am. Um, I, I'm a chocolate connoisseur. I really am. This is a pretty clean tasting chocolate. It I is. Think. And it's got all the amino acids. There's a lot of great things about this product. Um, and we'll get, there's one, there's one ingredient in particular um, that we talked about before we went on the air, the um, immunoglobulins. Um, right. I can't believe I said it. I kept loving it up before we went live on the air. And, uh, but that, that's an old school um, ingredient or what, what is it actually? Co- not ingredient. It's a, it's, it is a what? What is it's it? A, class- I would say just a, it's a component of the component. protein. Okay. Component, component, of, the component of, the of the protein. It's there in the, it's there in the natural raw milk, the fresh raw milk when it comes out of the cow. Um, the protein that you're speaking of is a whey protein. And let's get a little bit more into the whey protein later in the show. But this component that you're talking about is just one of the naturally occurring um, types of protein that occur within the the whey protein. And it's in breast milk. It is. The colostrum is is real rich, which is the the initial uh, the initial fluid right. the first few days of the of, of breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of colostrum, which has loads of this particular component in it because that helps build and boost the immunity of the baby. That's that needs to be the initial thing that the baby consumes are these immunoglobulins. And, and pediatricians used to give these to um, to children in replacement of antibiotics and things to boost their immune system. Why don't they do? Th- why is that not more prevalent now? Well, I don't know how prevalent it is right now. There, it still is done to to an extent. Some, if you go to a natural doctor, for instance, I give this type of protein and also even direct straight colostrum for children that need immune boosting and adults. A lot of adults need immune boosting if they have things like uh, eczema or autoimmune problems like, let's say, rheumatoid arthritis or, or lupus or something like that, you can give these immune-boosting uh, compounds 
from either a good whey protein, a raw whey protein, or, or a colostrum. And it does have a lot of beneficial effects. And I know um, medical doctors, even when in extreme cases, they give something called IVIG, which is just intravenous immunoglobulin. And they've, they've isolated the immunoglobulins out of human serum, and then they je- inject high dose into the, the compromised patient, and it can boost the immune system of someone who ha- maybe has had a bone marrow transplant or, or has severe... Uh, immune well, deficiency. This could save, I know I have an autoimmune disorder, had it since I was a child and it attacks different parts of my body. I used to have eczema. One At one point um, I woke up one morning back about six years ago and I had gone blind in my right eye. It, my, right. it attacked my retina. My, ble- my retina started bleeding. Luckily I was uh, uh, you know, smart enough to get to the doc- doctor right away and it saved my uh, sight in my eye but it came very, very close. It did permanent nerve damage. There is a part of my eye that's completely blind when I shut the other one. Wow. And um, so this is pretty serious stuff, it is. you know, and if this seriously, this is a big deal to me. And as we're t- sitting here talking about this, because when I get sick, I get very, very scared because I can't take antibiotics. Mm-hmm. They don't work on me. I'm severely allergic to them. Right. Um, so these components are, are, are really crucial. And autoimmunity is really scary. It's becoming very prevalent today. I think with all the toxicity and the gluten sensitivities and you just start combining all these things and all of a sudden we end up with, with these immune these compromised immune systems and autoimmunity showing up all over the place. And autoimmunity, by the way, for people listening, just means your body's attacking itself. Exactly. That's all it means. And, yeah. and these, these components um, that we're talking about in proteins, certain types of proteins anyway, can be very helpful. Yeah, and for women out there listening, um, I had to go through five miscarriages before they discovered really that that was what was happening in my body too uh, several years ago when I was trying to have a second child. And just curious, um, Sjogren's or, or you don't have to say specifically what you had if you don't if you don't want to but what type of autoimmunity was it it is uh you know what i can't believe i can't think of it but um no it's an it's an autoimmune i forget there's i can't remember the name of it okay sjogren's is one that sometimes attacks the eyes or that at least doesn't the sound ducks but there, there are so many different types I, I, i'm gonna have to call my doctor lupus. after the show and ask him what it is so i can okay. specifically <laughs> identify it but yeah so this is very real stuff and you know like i said when um when i get sick it's nice to know that I have a go-to, something that can really, really um, help boost my immune system. Right. And, and that's the thing that I want, to, want people to, be, to understand about this particular show. We're talking about protein, but I promise you this isn't a bodybuilder show. Yeah, you know, this is nothing what, to do with that. That's what a lot of people think of. Oh, protein is just for muscle building. Oh, and, no. and yes, it is, but it's for a lot of other things. It's so important for other things. And we're going to get into some of those important functions of protein other than just pure muscle building. Yeah. Well, show. well, and your your protein um, powder has the um, immunoglobulins in right. it. Eighteen hundred and fifty milligrams. Is that a good amount? What's a good amount to take? If you're like me, I've been sick for a week now. My my little girl was sick as well. Um, she ultimately had to be put on antibiotics. Her body, her immune system couldn't kick in um, as quickly because you know back to school, not getting enough rest, a lot of you know just a lot going on last week, and she wasn't able to overcome it. I um, hmm. So how much? How much should well, that, that dose is a nice maintenance dose. That's, that's just your, you could take it every day. Um, it'll be good for your, your immune system. Th- those proteins are also good for healing and sealing the, the gastrointestinal system. So that's, that's a component, actually, of autoimmunity, too, is a bad digestive system. And this can help that heal. But if you want to really get extra, a few servings of that, just two or three servings could be enough to really get that boost in, in cases where you need extra. Taking it every day doesn't make your body dependent on it or anything, or is it just... It, it just Not at all. It's, it's food. Remember, this is just regular food. It comes from, it comes from raw cow's milk. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're uh, making some synthetic uh, compound or something like that. It is, this is a naturally occurring protein in nature. It's perfectly normal for us to, to eat this type of food. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know there's a lot of, a lot of debate about cow, cow milk, whether it's normal or not to, to eat cow milk as an adult. And this isn't, just so people know, this isn't the same as eating whole cow milk. There's, there's a certain piece of cow milk that's, that's uh, isolated out, and that's all you're, you're eating. You're basically scraping away the bad type. And we'll talk about what whey protein is here here in a little while. Did you hear that mouse a minute ago? <laughs> what was that, I? <laughs> what sorry. is going on in there? I, I had a guest coming. I'm sorry. I just had one <laughs> quick question. Yeah. This, this protein, is that for any age? Can someone young start taking this protein and it won't af- uh, affect them in any way? Yeah, it's, it's only going to have positive effects, with the one exception if you have a, an extreme allergy to uh, dairy products, to cow milk. Okay. And those would be the only people that I would recommend not take this. The, the strange thing is this product has never been pasteurized as, as most milk, milk products have been. 
So I've had people with some somewhat of a dairy allergy uh, try this product, and they say it doesn't affect them negatively at all, whereas any other regular pasteurized product does. And it probably has to do with the enzymes being broken down, so it makes it more difficult to, to break down a pasteurized milk product. But there still is a possibility that, that you could have an allergy to this product. But most people don't have a whey allergy. Well, and you can go to any health food store, uh, I would think. Don't they have the immuno, immu, immunoglobulins in capsule form? They may. I don't know if you can. I mean, you'd have to look pretty hard. You can maybe get some colostrum in some places. You can get whey protein, but it's not going to have the immunoglobulins. Because when, when they pasteurize the milk, those immunoglobulins are broken apart. They're denatured, in other words. They're, they're just broken. And they're no longer those immune-boosting proteins anymore. I see a business opportunity here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> if they're not already out there, I bet, I don't know. I'll have to do some investigating and find out because it is an important thing. It's really important for it people with comprom compromised immune systems. You're not going to walk into a Walgreens probably and go to the vitamin section no. and, and find a no. immunoglobulin sitting yeah. right there. No. I seriously doubt no, that. No, I'm not, well, I'm, yeah, not, not in Walgreens, but, right. you know. But you might be able to find some colostrum in certain places or, or just a good... You know, a health conscious uh, natural doctor like myself or a, or a nutritionist, Absolutely. you could get colostrum or immunoglobulin from from whey protein. Yeah. So it and, is it is available. You don't have to have a prescription. You, it doesn't have to go. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't have to blood. go to the doctor. It's not unnatural. It boosts your immune system. I mean, why wouldn't all of us be taking it during the cold and flu season? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. I take it about every day. That's that tends to be my breakfast. It's just one of those things that kind of get out of the way in the morning. Get out. I get well, I had greens, mine this I morning. Some, I get some protein. And I'm ready for my workout today with Tina. She's going to kick my rear. We haven't worked out in like four or five days because of the holiday and her child was sick. My child was sick. I'm really looking forward to it. And for those of you that don't know, we work out at the studio. It's a great place on Preston Road. If you want to sweat, that's where you go. If you really want to work out, that's where you go. You are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190 with Bernadette and Dr. Jeremy Webster. You can find him at CompleteHealthDallas.com. That's CompleteHealthDallas.com, 972-735-0707. That's 972-735-0707. We will be back right after the break. Any old time. Is it, freedom is so great. Really? I mean, really, isn't it? To, to dream your dreams and to do what you want. You get an idea. You live in America. You can make it happen. I'm not a fan of communism, if that's yeah. what you're asking. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, and it's important because you know what? I want to I wanna uh, make a special tribute to Michael Clark Duncan. You know, uh, he was an athlete that, that died um, here uh, recently. Actor. Actor and, and well, I, I guess I consider him an athlete, too, because he was so incredible. He was in such incredible good shape. 54 years old, heart attack, heart attack. But one of the reasons I thought of him this morning is because I think the legacy that you leave behind is so incredibly important. How you live your life. Being in search of excellence, you know, living your dreams and all of that stuff that we talked about. You know, he was, people all over are saying now he's gone, okay? But you know what they're saying about him? Super nice guy, amazing guy. He grew up on the south side of, south side of Chicago, but he never, you know, he had a strong resolve. He never got involved in drugs or alcohol, and he was a good man. Just an overall good man. Took care of his children, took care of his family, took care of himself, and he, he died at 54 years old, but... You never know when it's going to You end. never know. So, man, get out there Let's and take advantage of it. You know, every make single day. Needs every to be. day. And what a beautiful day here today in, in the DFW area. The sun is shining. It's a little warm. It's going to be warm. But, you know, um, fall is fall is coming. It's can, coming. We can see the light. <laughs> we can see the light. I was in Kansas over the weekend and it was 112 yesterday. Are you kidding degrees. me? 112. It was 112 yes. in Kansas? It was awful. It was awful. Wow. At 11 o'clock, we looked at the clock, and it was 106. At 11.30. In Kansas? Oh, yeah. It's, What's up it's with hot. that? It was hotter this summer than last than, uh, than in, in Kansas than in Texas. Wow. That, that almost makes me feel like I can't breathe just hearing 112. Yeah, you don't want to be... Wow. You don't want to be wow. outside more than just running to your oh car. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That's inside. like being in a cooking in an oven. Yeah. <laughs> Not fun. No joke. Not I mean, fun. You have been proud of me. <laughs> I made gluten-free chocolate chip cookies yesterday. Well, I am proud of you. Aren't you proud? But they were already, you know, I just dropped them on the pan. <laughs> okay. But I did cook them. Okay. And they Enough were gluten-free. And they, well, I don't think they, they were Maybe really, 
They were made oh. by um, the Immaculate, um, I was going to say Immaculate Heart. That was the high school that I went to. It was the Immaculate Baking Company. Um, yeah, and they were, and so while I was cleaning house, I popped those cookies in the oven. I just, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, this weekend, Labor Day weekend, maybe the back to school has got me nesting big time. want to bake cookies and <laughs> clean my house and buy plants and do all kinds of silly stuff. <laughs> Eat more protein, and we'll get back on task. So talking about protein, okay, so... What problems could result from not eating enough protein, from a low consumption of protein? Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about what protein does in the body so, so it's easy to understand what problems can occur. Protein, if, if you think about your, your, your DNA and your, your genetic code, that, that seems like such a mystery to most people. But when you really get down to what your DNA does, what your genes do, every gene simply does one thing. It codes for a protein or a series of amino acids. So you can start thinking, okay, if if your genes control everything and everything that they do is just simply making different types of protein, that can kind of make you understand how important amino acids and protein in general really are because that's what everything in your body is based off of. Not just the structural component, not just the bones and the muscle, which, by the way, are protein. Your skin is protein. Your organs are protein. And how about the brain? Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, the brain is protein. It's, it's a protein structure. There's a lot of fat embedded in it, but it's a protein scaffolding that's, that has, has that important fat in it. So, yes, every single organ in your body, every single <laughs> tissue is made of, made of protein. So your body's made of protein. That's the obvious, the structural aspect of it, the, the anatomy. But it gets much deeper than that with protein. Your, your protein, the, the amino acids, once you break your protein down into those of individual components, those amino acids, they're used to make all of the other things in your body, like enzymes. Enzymes control your entire biochemistry. So when you want to convert cholesterol, for example, into cortisol or cholesterol into estrogen or testosterone, there's an enzyme that controls that process, and that enzyme is made of, guess what? Protein. Protein. So your DNA codes to make this enzyme, and then that enzyme derives your this wonderful chemistry set that is our body. But it's made of protein. If you don't have enough protein, you can't make those enzymes, and your body's biochemistry doesn't work. Wow. Now, some of those amino acids are used to make really important chemicals in your body. So have you, you've heard of serotonin and dopamine? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They're, they're neurotransmitters that make your – they control mood a lot, but they have a lot of other important functions. Dopamine, for example, controls initiation of action whether it be physical or mental. If you can't get your thought out or get your speech going, that you might be at the beginning stages of Parkinson's disease. You might have something else going on. Don't, don't think that you have Parkinson's disease just because you stumble and stammer over words once in a while. But, some, but when you have Parkinson's disease, you can't make dopamine properly. That's what happens. You can't initiate speech and you can't initiate movement. So you, you have a hard time getting moving. So that's just because one of these neurotransmitters, dopamine, isn't in normal amounts. That dopamine is made of one particular amino acid from protein. So is serotonin. So is, uh, so is thyroid hormone. A lot of your hormones are made from certain amino acids or from, from whole proteins. So all of your biochemistry is either made up of proteins or it's driven by enzymes, which are also made of protein. It's all fascinating. It's really fascinating. I can see... Um just, you know, the, the interest in medicine. And, and you uh, used to be um, a engineer. I was. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of engineers go into medicine. I find that really interesting. My, my doctor, um, who I'll have to ask what autoimmune disorder we talk <laughs> right. about the break. I don't know the name of it. I'm going to have to find out. It makes me sound ignorant when I don't know the name of the own, the <laughs> own autoimmune disown, or disorder right. that I own. Um, but, uh, it's probably yeah, he, something with a long name. I'm sure it was. I was like, yeah, I got it. Okay. Just tell me what I need to do and I'm sure. good to go. I'm going to go run off and do, run some errands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but seriously, the, the engineering mind um, it seems like a natural gravitation to, to medicine. Well, I always thought it was. It, it's, it's an anal- analytical field, and then that allows me to be more analytical in, in the medical field, in the, in the neurology and the biochemistry. I thought it was a natural fit. Most of my colleagues weren't engineers, but to me, it's just like, wow, I I think engineering helped me out because it is, like I said, it's very analytical. You have to put things together step by step. And to me, that just makes you a better doctor. I know there's a lot of great doctors out there who are English majors or or biology majors, and and they're great doctors too. You, yeah. don't, you don't have to be an engineer by, by any means. No, but I do think that, that it's a, it com- they complement each other well. I, well, I, I agree. The two fields, I, I do. do. Okay, so 
I remember uh, back a couple of weeks ago we were talking and you mentioned that some people sleep better if they eat some protein before they go to bed because I know that's me. You mm-hmm. know, I'm the cookies and milk before I go to bed. Love my milk. Adam's the same way. Many people out there listening are like to go to bed. Is it with the full stomach or is the protein really do something? What's up with that? Well, some people do say they get to better bed, get to bed better if they eat something, but but sometimes they're eating the wrong type of thing. They're eating something that has, for instance, some carbohydrate in it or some sugar, and what that does is it boosts your immune. It, sorry, it boosts, it boosts your insulin levels, and that can make you drowsy. So, All right. <laughs> so that can that can put people to sleep. So sometimes people like to eat something like that. The problem is, if your adrenal system, which is your your stress system, if your stress system is, system isn't really strong and robust. That can lead to a bigger problem. What it can do is it can lead to the sugar roller coaster at night, and you can end up waking up a lot in the middle of the night with this with this uh, adrenaline. Surge, yeah, that would be me. <laughs> which is which is not good. So you don't want to you don't want to use this 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 carb this carb load to make yourself drowsy, but then be bouncing around all night long. Well, and milk doesn't really have that much protein in it. It really no, it doesn't. has a little bit, a little it, bit, it, not enough it, to really. It you causes know. it causes an insulin spike. Uh, which isn't which isn't so great that co- that puts you on that sugar roller coaster that we talked about. Uh-huh. So much better to eat something like the raw whey protein or some leftover chicken or a, you know a small piece of just some maybe some walnuts or something like that. And what happens when you do that? It slows this release of sugar in your system. So you have this much slower. You, you don't have the sugar roller coaster right. that you would have if you ate just a pile of spaghetti before it, before uh, <laughs> dinner. Yeah, and and actually I'm. Uh, my doctor, who I saw a few weeks ago, the, your glycemic index, it's best that it remains steady. If you think of like a heartbeat, not, you know, lows and highs, but as steady mm-hmm. as you can. And you can you can achieve that by eating less carbohydrates and a more uh, steady uh, intake of protein. Right. Right. Yeah. That it slows it slows the transit from your from your gut into your bloodstream. And it just it's like having a timed release effect. It, it steadies it out. It smooths it out. So that, that you don't have this sugar crash. And that sugar crash is what leads to this big adrenaline surge while you're sleeping oftentimes um, in, the, in those people who are fatigued um, and, and don't have a robust a, adrenal system. So you can eat protein. And oftentimes, rather than waking up at 2 or 3 in the morning, they say, well, I slept all the way through 2 and 3 and didn't wake up. For some people, that's a huge plus because you get, rather than have like 3 hours of good sleep, now you've turned that 3 hours into 5 or 6 hours and that can be the difference between waking up feeling groggy and waking up and feeling refreshed. Well, and if you're sick, your body repairing if you're not sleeping well. Very true. That's when your, your body immunity, repairs itself. Your immunity, your growth hormone release, all of these things happen. Anti-aging. When, when you are sleeping. <laughs> yeah, beauty sleep. There, there's, 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 there's truth in true. that. That's true. That's very true because I'm going to tell you, I slept really well um, last night and uh, the night before. Um, probably from complete exhaustion because my little one's been sick all week long, coughing, coughing all night long. And I, um, I noticed when I looked in the mirror this morning that I, um, I looked refreshed. I looked, I looked, good, you know, good pretty good. My eyes weren't puffy or anything. I felt like I slept really well and I looked pretty good. Yeah. So, and and that, that's the truth. You go to sleep, you release growth hormone. If you go to sleep early enough, you release growth hormone and growth hormone helps you heal. It helps your muscles, helps your digestive system heal and all the other tissues in your body heal. So sleep's crucial and protein can be one of those things that can help with sleep, but but protein also is crucial. If you're low in protein, you could have muscle wasting. And I think that's the first thing that people would think of. If you don't eat enough protein, your muscle tissue could waste away. And believe me, girls, if you want to be skinny, you don't want to lose your muscle tissue. You no. want to lose your fat tissue, Mm-mm. not your muscle. If you lose your muscle, you will actually look fatter. And by losing your muscle tissue, that could actually make you gain fat weight which makes you look even worse, yeah. no matter what the scale says. Yeah. So we don't want to waste our muscle. Well, you know how I feel. I don't get on the scale. I don't know how much I weigh. don't want to know. I go by what I look like in the mirror, and that includes my lines on my legs, my arms, whatever. I, I, I want to look lean. I want to look strong. Sure. You are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190. When we come back after the break, we are going to talk about the different qualities of proteins, and, and we're going to talk all about different types of proteins, and is there a good source? Of a good vegan source of protein. Maybe so. Yeah, right here on One Life Radio. All right, you are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190. I, that song's going to get me dancing. That's one of my favorite songs to dance to. Yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> 
<laughs> Get it going, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I love, you know, you talk about things that, that I don't know what you guys like to do. Jeremy, do you like to dance? Probably not because you're a guy, I right? <laughs> I can't dance. To you save can't myself. dance? And I'm a drummer, so so drummers are supposed to have rhythm, and I do. But that doesn't translate to dancing. It's a different type of rhythm. Well, hey, you don't have to be creative. Larry North does the vacuum cleaner. You know, that's what he calls it. He does the vacuum cleaner. What do you do, Ike? (laughs) I dance also. I do the sit and watch. You do the sit and watch? (laughs) Yeah. You sit and watch. That's a good one. I do the the sit and drink. The sit and drink and watch? (laughs) How about you, Ike? Do you like to dance? Yeah, I like to dance. Yeah. I do dance every once in a while. I love to dance, man. That's one of the simple pleasures in life. To just sure. get up and groove to music. I guess that's why I like that scene in Pulp Fiction so much. That mm-hmm. was so me. I mean, that that's me, dropping right into it. I'm just jealous. I can't do You're this. jealous? All right. No. <laughs> well, you know, when we were talking, this is, I'm, I'm famous for this, jumping ahead, imagine that. But um, <laughs> one of the questions that we didn't really get to the meat of it, uh, no pun intended, or the protein of it, um, what problems could result from low protein consumption? Okay, so now that we understand what protein does in the body, we can get to this, we can really answer this. Uh, sugar cravings. Sugar cravings are huge. We we mentioned kind of why, how the sugar um, goes on the sugar roller coaster. If you don't have enough protein, you're going to have sugar cravings. When you have this sugar influx, your sugar goes up, your insulin goes up along with it, and then they crash. When they crash, you crave more sugar. So as you said, when you eat protein, it slows that transit and it smooths out your sugar. So your glucose levels stay very constant. You're going to have a lot, more, lot less sugar cravings when you have plenty of protein consumption. So sugar cravings are a problem if you become deficient. I mentioned muscle wasting, but I also mentioned earlier how your uh, your neurotransmitters, your dopamine and your serotonin and your melatonin and your epinephrine, which is adrenaline, all of those things are made out of particular amino acids. So if you're low in protein, if you don't consume enough, eventually you're going to become potentially depressed, potentially uh, anxiety could start resulting because you can't make serotonin or dopamine or adrenaline properly. And if you can't make serotonin, you can't make melatonin. So you're going to end up with insomnia because melatonin is made directly out of serotonin, which is made out of tryptophan, which is a which is a piece of protein. So here's a lot of problems. Thyroid hormone is also made out of tyrosine, which is another amino acid. So you could be low, believe it or not, you could be low, you could have low thyroid purely because you don't eat enough protein. You're not eating enough protein. And you don't get enough of that essential building block to make your thyroid hormone. What are what are some of the worst um, things that you could eat as far, of course, we all know sugar, but I mean, things that people, because I know when Dr. Tuleman and I were talking about this, the glycemic index and keeping it steady and not having spikes up and down. One of the things that surprised me that was on that list of foods to avoid was watermelon. People yeah. think watermelon's so healthy, but it's very high in sugar. It is, and a lot of fruits are high in sugar. So you want to eat fruits. If you want to eat fruits, you want to eat the ones where you're eating the skin typically. There's a lot of nutrients in the skin. The antioxidants are primarily in the skin of the fruit. And you want to eat fruits that aren't really huge. So a blueberry, think of a blueberry, how small it is. You're eating the skin. You're eating more skin than the inside. The middle of the fruit is typically the sugar of the fruit, and the skin is the nutrients. So you can kind of use that idea when you choose what type of fruit you want to buy. Plums are pretty good. Dark grapes are good. Small cherries are good. Berries are good. So, so choose those fruits. Um, White rice was on that list, too, is one uh, of the... Of course. It's pure sugar. There's, it, there's, that's nothing but a pile of pure sugar. And listen, eat, ladies, rice. because it's very anti-aging, all those spikes in your... <laughs> or guys, too, but mostly, very I think. Very aging. They're, they're very aging, that, all those spikes in your um, glycemic index. Yes. Okay, so brown, brown rice, white rice. Let's talk about that for just a sec, because I know a lot of people, I know I think, what, is, what are the differences? And is brown rice... Do, is it, tell us the difference... Please. Well, it's slightly better. It's not refined, meaning they haven't stripped all the fiber out. Right. And they haven't stripped a lot of the, the nutrients that are that are inherently in the rice. So but do you, you still have the spike? Yeah, you do. You There's still just as much sugar in brown rice as there is in white rice. So mm. that, that rice will break down. But since you have the, the fiber with it, and since you have some of the nutrients, you can handle the spike a little bit better because the fiber will slow down the transit from the, the gut into the bloodstream, just like protein does. So that's one of the other things I was going to mention when you t- start talking about the sugar and, and wanting to maintain a level sugar, uh, normal sugar levels. Fiber and protein are your two best friends. So consume fiber-rich food, protein-rich food, and not too much, well, no, preferably no refined carbohydrates. So like your, like your white breads, your white tortillas, your, your white rice. Stay away from those foods. If you do any grains, eat the whole grains and eat them in real small amounts. We can handle a little bit of rice 
But a lot of people, you know, if you're if you're not really active or a real real competitive type of athlete, you can't handle a large type of rice because you're just not going to use that much sugar at one sitting. So a lot of that builds up in the blood, and you you cause this sugar roller coaster and insulin roller coaster, which causes aging and all the other problems we've talked about. Well, I know I'm not. I don't eat perfect all the time. I don't want to. Ike, I'm sure you can relate to me on this. Come come yes. with me if you will. On this. I like my tortilla chips. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> with and I had homemade guacamole this weekend. <laughs> I dragged them through the. You know, the tortilla chips. Now, I, I picked a healthy al- healthier alternative, a better bad choice. I picked the ones that were sprouted um, or the blue corn that have flax seed in them and things like that. Do you still say no on that? Well, I, uh, yeah, somewhat. But what you do, if you're, if you're going to eat some chips with guacamole, uh, usually, lo- usually the sauces, if it's a salsa or a guacamole or something like that, that's really healthy. The chips aren't so healthy. So if I, I would say get your best chip you can get. And eat as much of the guacamole. Really pile on the guacamole and pile on the salsa because that way you're going to eat more of the good healthy stuff and not near as much of the refined chip. So basically stay away from uh, Mexican food, right? <laughs> well, in, in, in some cases, yes, but you can still eat, you can still eat um, like the grilled vegetables and the, 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 uh, the grilled meats, the fajita meat, okay. the guacamole, stuff like that. The salsas are great. Pico de gallo is great. But just the only thing about Mexican food is the rice and the tortillas. Okay. So, so oftentimes I'll just order fajitas. And I just won't have any tortillas with it. And I'll yeah. mix all the guacamole, the guac and the pico and the onions and the peppers and mix that with the with the chicken and shrimp and, yeah. and beef. And to me, that, it's delicious. Pour some salsa over that. You've got a really good meal. You still get the great flavor, just not all the extra. I do that when I go to Taco Diner. I get the uh, sure. Estilo tacos, the uh, fish tacos, and I um, pull them off the – I might eat one of the corn corn tortillas, and then the rest I leave. I like put a little pile and eat it like a, like and a can, salad. Yeah, and you can do that at the Cadobas or the uh, – Chipotle, you can get the naked burrito. It's, exactly. it's a burrito, but without That's the tortilla. Right. Just eat all the good stuff and yeah. all the all the healthy stuff, the nutrient rich stuff, rather than just the tortilla and the rice. Mm-hmm. And tastes delicious to me. And okay, so if you eat the rice with the red beans or the brown beans, the pinto beans, or whatever, is that a complete protein or pretty uh, close? Yes, technically it is because you need to get. There's nine amino acids that we need to get from our food, and our body can make the other. Uh, what would it be, 12, 12 to 12 or 13? As long as we're getting those one. essential nine? As long as you're getting the essential nine, technically you have a complete protein because our body can, through enzyme reactions, can make the others. Now, you're not going to make a lot of those very efficiently, so we need to really, we, we should be consuming Limit. some of those other things as well, like uh, like cysteine, for example. That's that's really rich in the protein that, uh, that you eat, the, the complete raw whey protein. Um, it's technically not essential. You can, you can make it from methionine, which is another essential amino acid, but the problem is you're not, your body's not very good at making that. So if you want to detoxify your body or if you want to have the antioxidant properties of cysteine, I recommend eating something that's rich in cysteine or is rich in some of the more complete proteins. Now, rice and beans technically are because you do get some of all of the nine essential amino acids. The problem is you're not going to get a very high amount of some of those. So it's a very poor quality protein. It's enough to live. Yes, you're not going to die from having none, but, um, yeah, you're, you're going it, to – it's not going to be very good as far as really achieving enough protein to sustain optimal health. It, will, it may sustain life, but a poor quality of life. Yeah, well, and I think we were, we, you know, the uh, a good sources of um, vegan protein for all the vegans that are out there. You know, they struggle with that. Mm-hmm. And, and there is a really good uh, nutrient supplement out there that, that we have now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fortified pea protein. Now, pea protein is a little bit better. It's, it's kind of like a bean protein. It's basically from the same family as a bean protein. And then you can mix in certain amino acids that, that it's lacking just in isolated amino acid form. And you end up with this really nice, high-quality protein, completely vegan. There's no animal products in it whatsoever. And, it's and not, it comes from green peas. Yes, it does. Yeah, they just isolated the amino acids and then thrown in a couple extra to fortify it. And you have a nice, smooth, it's, it's got a different texture than whey protein. Well, whey protein doesn't bother me, but pea protein has this really fluffy, smooth texture. And a lot of people like the, the texture of the pea protein. So for, for vegans, someone who doesn't even want to much less eat, who, who's not eating beef or, or chicken, but w- or for somebody who's strictly vegan and won't even eat, for instance, a whey protein from, mm-hmm. from dairy, like mm-hmm. that would be your best choice. And I would recommend you eat a lot of it because you're, if you're not eating whey protein or, or animal, you know, animal meat, then you need a lot of protein from some source, and you're just not going to get it from beans and rice. Okay, well, we have a couple minutes, a lot of different types of protein. Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the cows, goats, soy, uh, the, like we've been talking about, the whey protein, rice protein. Mm-hmm. There's such a thing as rice protein? 
There is, and that's kind of like the pea protein. They, rice is rich in certain amino acids, but not others. So you have to fortify it. It's, and it, yet it it's high be, in sugar. Well, as when it goes in the body, it, it is. But, but for the proteins, they, they basically isolate the protein out and they, they eliminate the starch from the rice. So you're getting the protein. It's, it's a decent, uh, again, that could be a decent vegetable source, but rice by itself is not a good protein source. Rice fortified with certain amino acids c- can be a good quality protein. The good thing about rice, the good thing about it is that it's low in allergies. You're, you won't find hardly anybody who has an allergic reaction to rice. So it's very anti-inflammatory. So if um, you have a child that's suffering from a lot of allergies, a dairy um, uh, sensitivity, then rice protein, I mean, a rice milk would be a good alternative? Um, not a rice milk. No, rice milk isn't the same as rice protein. Ah. It's, I'm talking about a powdered sup, rice a supplement, powdered. Okay. A, a fortified supplement where they take, they isolate the, the amino acids or the protein from rice and then, then fortify it with extra amino acids so that it is now a good, solid, complete protein. That's what I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend it unless you need to, to do rice because you just can't do some of the others. Um, if you, if you'll do dairy, I would recommend, uh, my, ter- my first choice would be a raw whey protein. That's by far the, the, the healthiest form out there, unless you just have an extreme cow dairy allergy. And in that case, I would say, well, you could try the goat. And if you're just simply not going to do any kind of dairy whatsoever or any animal product because you're vegan, then you go with the pea protein and the rice protein would be the, my, my last choice. It would be kind of the, the last resort um, just because you can't tolerate any other type of protein. But all of them could be fairly high quality. Um, goat's milk. You mentioned goat's milk. Yeah, goats. It, uh, it's a pretty good source. It's not quite as good as fresh raw cow milk as far as the uh, detoxifying properties. But for those who have trouble digesting, it's, it's a more preferred source of protein. So, de- so goat milk can be much easier to digest than cow milk. Yeah, if you can take the taste. I have just a strong aversion to goat, I don't blame goat's you. milk. I it's, just can't get past it. It's a little stinky. It's, it's, it, yeah, <laughs> but there, there are a lot, of, a lot of choices out there. Yeah, but all right. Raw whey protein is, 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 my, is my favorite. If it's you can, your choice. That's your if, thumbs up. Yep. All so right. I don't have a problem with it. You have been listening to Dr. Jeremy Webster here on One Life Radio. You can find him at completehealthdallas.com. That's completehealthdallas.com. And we encourage you to like us on Facebook. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> you know, uh, Everybody face- likes Facebook. Uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Well, that's a whole other show. But, well, for everyone <laughs> out there, have a super, super great, healthy, safe weekend because you get one body, you get one mind, and you get one life. One life when it's one need in the night. One love we get to share.